Hey gang, it's day two. Mega build. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And it is indeed day two of the Mega Build SNS Cadillac Ambulance conversion to a hearse. Let's get right into it. Now, if you notice that I'm talking really fast in this video, faster than normal, uh, it's because there really was so much to this project, and I want to get it all in for you guys. I don't want to miss any important details. So, yeah, I'm, I'm smoking through this stuff, but you're going to have a lot of chances to see this, so just sit back and enjoy. So, anyhow, uh, while I was working on this, it, another thought popped into my head, and I decided to make a lot more work for myself, and I decided I wanted to do a wheel swap. I didn't want to do anything garish to this uh, hearse. I wanted it to look like a hearse, but I wanted to give it a little bit of an attitude. And so what I saw in my mind was this thing dropped a little bit and just sitting on some flat black plain steel wheels. So I went out and bought two M2 kits that had steel wheels and tires and stuff. And I brought those home and uh, right now, I'm just going to open one of them and get uh, one of the wheels and one of the axles out and do a test fit to see if this is if there's even remotely any chance that this can happen. And if so, then I'm going to kick myself in the ass later for it because it's going to make a lot more work for me. So right now I've got uh, one of the wheels on the axle. I'm just using the existing uh, connectors on the body. I haven't put in anything to drop it or anything like that. This is just a test. All I want to do is see just how bad is this going to be and is it possible. So I've just got the wheel in the base kind of loose. It's just sitting in there. I am going to put the interior in there because I need to make sure everything's sitting the way it would sit together and then I'll line this all up and see what it looks like because I think it'll give the car a lot of attitude without taking it from a hearse into some sort of a custom rod. That's not what I'm shooting for. I want a hearse. Now, right off the bat, I can see it looks amazing, oh, oh, but there. it totally doesn't fit. Too thick. Um, but I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking it's close enough that I can make it work. So I'm picturing, first of all, I was going to need to do an axle tube anyhow to lower the, the ride height a little bit anyhow. So an axle tube was going to be necessary, and so I was going to have to do some modifications to the base, so I'm just going to go ahead and forge ahead with the plan to drop this thing. And uh, this is going to be a huge monumental task, more than I ever imagined it would be. So what i got to do first off is I'm going to have to essentially tub the back here. So that floor that I built and all that painting I did, now i got to cut a big chunk out of it uh, because the back wheels aren't going to fit up in there. In, in the, the original, they fit up underneath the gurney and they fit up underneath the little compartment so there was plenty of room. Well, I've got a flat floor here, so now I've got to uh, make clearance for the wheels. So back to the nippers and the X-Acto knife. I'll trim those out and start making a little clearance. And right now, I have not really uh, understood the gravity of how much work I'm going to have to do to the base. That's that's going to come back and bite me in the ass a little bit later here, so we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so I have the, the uh, back tubbed now, and uh, I'm going to kind of put the interior back in again, and I'm putting my little test wheel in the rear now so that I can test and see how that's going to fit and uh, give me an idea of where we're at. And yeah, it's it's actually going in there. So you can see I can get it in there. And uh, it's still not dropped, and it still already looks badass, okay? Um, you're going to see I'm going to change the, the tires and wheels to something else. I, I later realized these wheels are not black. They're blue. And the tires just have 
too much uh, writing on the you know sidewalls, and I'm not digging that. That's not what I'm looking for. So we'll be making a change later. But right now, I can see that this is going to work out, and I'm going to keep forging ahead. So here's the other M2 kit, and this one has steel wheels. They're white, um, but the tires are just plain old black wall tires. So I think I'm going to use this set save the other set for something else and uh i'll use these and then i'll eventually paint the wheels flat black to get the look i'm looking for so let's get this m2 apart and get these wheels uh claimed for this new project all right now here's one of the coffins i've gone ahead and put a little bit of a distressed kind of wood colored paint job on it uh, i didn't put too much effort into it i just wanted to kind of give it kind of like a scary coffin look i don't know if you're going to see any bit of this at all and so as long as i've got it out here let's go ahead and do a little bit of detail work on it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, paint some uh, gold carry handles on this thing and maybe little gold corners on the coffin just to give it a little bit of life and hopefully in the end you'll be able to see some of this in the final product so what I'm doing here is I'm breaking out some Tamiya Gold Leaf paint. Uh, I forget the number off the top of my head. I'll, I'll have it flash up here underneath us. And uh, using my little magnifying visor and a very, very fine Tamiya brush, I'm just painting in some little gold handles. And then uh, I'll, I will put in little uh, dabs of gold on all the corners, tops and bottoms, just to give it a little more life. Now look at this. Okay, this is the post I was talking about, and I'm so excited about what I've done here. What I did is I took a piece of copper tubing and I basically slid it down over the existing post. Now there was a little tab of metal in the body and I had to cut a notch for it, and I ended up actually kind of having to tap this down with a, a hammer a little bit, but I, I got a really nice fit of this brass tube around the post. Now what I'm doing is that I'm filling it with the uh, the baking soda, and then I'll put the uh, cyanoacrylate in it to fill the rest of it. Now this post only was blown out the side a little bit. It wasn't the worst in the world, and I'm going to do more experiments and a whole video on this. But the goal here is to build a post that will hold a screw. Now, I'm not trying to build the Eiffel Tower here. I'm trying to just get a post that will hold the screw. Um, and we'll see how that goes. And we'll do some other testing with it. But I, I'm really excited about this technique. And I'm going to do a, a whole video really quickly on this technique, on rebuilding this post. And, and I think it's going to work out fantastic. So, okay, what I've done is I've got the, the collar around what's left of the post. And it's really nice and tight, and I packed the, the, the hole and the drilled out part with the uh, baking powder. And now I'm putting in the, the CA, and I'm going to let it not just saturate the baking powder, but kind of run all around the outside of the post and stuff to kind of lock everything together here. And then I'm going to let it dry, and here I'm going to bring it up here in a second so that you can see up close and personal what this looks like. Now look at this. Okay, tell me that doesn't look like it's going to work out. Okay, the big question is going to be how will it drill? Okay, that's, that's really what it's going to come down to, is how will it drill? Okay, so I'm going to let that dry, and now what I've done is I've ground away a bunch of the uh, uh, base, all of the parts that would have held the wheels on, and on top of it, on the inside side, I'm putting uh, axle tubes. This will raise the wheels a little bit higher up into the body, giving it that dropped look, and also serve as the tubes to hold the axles and wheels in place, because to get the clearance I needed, I had to get rid of the existing parts. And I found out something here. When grinding on these bases, they can get so hot they become brittle, and I actually broke the front corner off of this piece. And fortunately, it had some, like, teeth to it, and I was able to glue it back together using a little CA. And then later, I'm going to go back and put a fillet of uh, epoxy over the, the axle tubes, and I'll put a little over the top of that repair section. 
So far, so good though. And and the post repair, it's hard as a rock, man. This is this is, I'm hope, I'm hopeful. Okay, so back to the 3D resin printer, and I'm printing these little tiny embellishments that are going to go on the side of the the hearse. And I modeled these in Tinkercad online, and then sent them to my resin printer and printed them out. I made like five copies, you know, five pairs. And these things are almost hair-like. They're so small, I can't even begin to tell you. Uh, but I think they came out great, and they're going to be really nice on the side of the ambulance, uh, the hearse, that is. Okay, so I have drilled out the post, and here I am doing right in front of you the first ever. I, I drilled it, and I did tap it. I normally don't tap, but I'm putting a screw into it, okay? So it did slip a little to one side, uh, I, I need to find a better way to control where I'm drilling into the repair. But I was able to drill it, tap it, and right now it's got the screw in it, and I'm putting a little torque on it. I'm trying to be careful here. I don't want to blow it out. But it's, it's actually taking a little torque, so I think we're going to be okay here. All right, so wheel tubes are in. Everything's in place. Let's do a test fit and see how it all works. Well, this would have been a lot easier, except I was stupid enough that I insisted on this thing being able to roll. And uh, it didn't roll at first, so I had to go back and do a lot of uh, additional modifications. I had to narrow the, uh, the base some more. I had to trim the axles down uh, because it just would have drove me nuts to have done this much work to this project and not have it roll. So I went back and did a bunch more work to it, and now I'm doing a test fit, and everything fits. And yes, the wheels roll. As you can see, it rolls back and forth. So, pretty happy at this point. Normally by this point I've got paint on because I let my paint dry for a long, long time and uh, uh, I put it off because I wasn't sure how this project was going to go. Uh, so I am going to paint it right now. I've got a, a couple coats of Tamiya fine primer on it, especially because I had to deal with the stuff on the roof and the rear windows. And here I am giving it a final, very fine sanding. And now I'm going to go ahead and paint it with some uh, Tamiya X1 gloss black paint. And as my standard procedure, I'm going to mix the paint with a, li a little bit of a Tamiya X20 thinner, and I'm going to use a little bit of Mr. Color Self-Leveling thinner, which will retard the, uh, the drying process and allow the paint to flow out and give you a really nice, smooth, glassy finish. Okay, with the paint mixed, I'll use my normal painting procedures of a tack coat, medium coats, and then some wet coats here. And I'll go ahead and get this black laid down and see what it looks like. Okay, so I think it looks amazing, but it's going to look even better when I come back and put some gloss urethane from the Redline shop over the top of this thing. But for right now, this thing is looking bad ass. Okay, so after letting the black dry, uh, it's time to go ahead and put the clear coat on it. So I'm going to mist down my booth. The car is clean, and I'm kind of spritzing everything to keep woolly boogers from floating about. And then I'm going to get out the uh, uh, clear coat from the Redline shops and some hardener. And I'm going to mix all that up together. And then I'm going to go ahead and clear this sucker, which is going to give it not only this amazing glass-like finish, but it's going to make it hard as rocks, okay? This thing is going to be just beautiful and durable. So again, uh, thin mist coat, medium coat, and then wet coats. And I'm going to get a great shot here. Is it right here? Watch this. Look at... Okay, see it? See that? See how you can see it going on wet and clear and glossy? That's what you're looking for, and that's what I'm always talking about, the lighting. Now watch when I go to the roof here. Okay, you're going to be able to see this going down. Watch this. This is... You've got to be able to see that. If you don't see that, that's not your final coat. I'm 
just wet enough to see that because if I went a little less it would be powdery looking okay no more because you don't want it to run but it came out fantastic I can't be happier look at that finish O M G okay it's amazing I can read by the, that reflection on that thing I love it okay just because my finish has to dry doesn't mean I can't keep working so what I'm doing is I'm taking the glass I'm gonna try and use and I've got it into the that original body that I took apart so that I can kind of line everything up and cut the back windows away because like I said the panels I use to fill the back windows stand proud and it wouldn't sit right and it would it'd be a whole problem so uh, I'm using this this body to help me get the glass ready to put into the uh, the finished product okay and so a little bit of test fitting now with this window it's got to kind of slide into the windshield opening first and then you push it forward and and lo and behold it's fitting pretty good so I'm pretty happy with this okay so I'm sure you can tell I'm on a roll right now when when you're on a roll you want to find ways to keep that going so uh, the base was painted with Tamiya X1 gloss black. It's plenty dry. It didn't get the clear coat. So I can go ahead and permanently install the wheels. And while they're in, then I can go ahead and start painting the white uh, steel wheel with a uh, Tamiya XF1 flat black. And uh, get that done. Put that aside to dry. So it's looking pretty awesome. Now you know I love homages to the kids who own these cars, and here is this new one. It's my new partner, Harry Nuts. Um, Harry is a monkey that I found taking that first ambulance apart. The kid who had owned it had stuffed him in the back thinking he needed emergency help, and when I took it apart, I was so not paying attention that when I started to pick everything up, there was Harry laying on my work table, and I love him. And I'm not trying to steal Austin's thunder with Jimmy or anything like that, but Harry is going to be my new sidekick. And so I was super cranked to have him, and I think it's just kind of funny as hell that he was stuffed inside the back of this ambulance. And uh, I love him, and he's going to be around for as long as I'm doing these videos. But now I can go ahead and turn my attention to polishing the glass. And this stuff is so brittle. I'm just being really careful. The glass is actually in pretty good shape and a, a little bit of work with the flitz polish and that should be about all it needs then when I'm done I'll clean it up in some water uh, to get rid of the residual polish before I take it and give it a, a swim in my go-to standard favorite gauzy uh, it really makes the glass work out fantastic I love the stuff always looks great so here I am just mixing it trying not to induce a bunch of bubbles and uh, now I can go ahead and dip the windshield. I got a little stick here that I can lean it on so it doesn't glue itself to the paper plate because it, that gets old after a while. So now I'll just kind of wick off the extra on a little paper towel. And then I can go ahead and set it down on the plate. Cover it up with a, uh, a cover to keep any uh, snot rockets or anything like that from landing on top of it and ruining my glass. And then I'll put that aside to dry until I'm ready for it. Okay, I don't know if you can feel it, but I can feel it as we're getting closer and closer to finishing this, and I'm really jazzed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mask and paint the roof, okay, the uh, the vinyl look that it needs. And I found the coolest way in the world to uh, mask this off and keep the taping on the body to a minimum, thanks to Time Rider, who just did a challenge video with uh, Austin over at Diecast Resurrection, and he used this technique, and I was amazed by it. So first I'm taping off all the detail parts using my uh, a Tamiya masking tape, and I'm making sure to burnish down the edges with a little toothpick to make sure I get a nice good seal everywhere that I need it. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I'm going to do here at the end that uh, I got directly from Time Rider. I'll give you a hint. It involves that glass that you see on my work table. So I've done all the, the detailed taping 
and I've got the body sitting down on this piece of glass. He used a piece of cardboard. And I'm going to just kind of tape over the top of the car and tape it down onto this glass. Not only does it give me a nice, great, stable surface, but look, I'm only putting tape just on the very top of the car. The sides are getting almost nothing, okay, because most of the tape is now laying down onto the glass. And I'm really digging the way that worked out. So again, thank you, Time Rider, for the great tip. So all I'm doing is taking the uh, blue to me, uh, not the blue Tamiya tape, but the blue uh, painter's tape, and just kind of going over the Tamiya tape and then taping it down to the glass. And this is reducing the amount of contact between tape and my paint job, which I've worked so hard on, uh, because I don't want to screw all that up. And then I found one last little detail spot that I wanted to touch up, so I'm, I'm using a little Tamiya tape to finish that up. But this is what I have now, just this little tarp laying over the top of my car and I can go take it to the paint booth where I will use Redline Shop's Magic Black and it gives these great vinyl tops and so here it is fresh from the paint booth with the uh, Magic Black on it from the Redline Shop and uh, you know my credo as soon as I'm done cleaning out the airbrush I'm going to pull the tape off because if you wait too long you can start to tear the, the paint and, and do all sorts of other damage uh, you you want to keep this under paint uh, or under tape as short a time as possible. So we'll just get all this peeled off and we'll see what we have. And hopefully this should really start to make this thing look like a hearse. Okay, seriously, are you seeing this? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Because... I'm seeing amazing, okay? This thing is looking badass. Now, you'll notice the back window's in already, okay? That was a, a little oversight on my part. I had fabricated it and stuck it in. The, that, that whole thing was a nightmare. But the, the back window was in, and I broke so many of them trying to make that happen that there was no way I was going to pull that out because as I was trying to glue it in, I was trying to put a little curvature into it, and uh, so I was pushing on it with a little toothbrush, and I uh, kept cracking them. So, I, I mean, I ran through a lot of window pieces making uh, replacements and doing that over and over and over again. So once I got one to work, there was no way that was coming out of there. But basically, all I did is cut something to fit, and then I set it in there and held it down as good as I could uh, to make it conform to the shape of the back of the rig, and then uh, super glued it in. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm doing a test fit of all the major components, okay, to see how everything is going to work out. The uh, glass is, is laid in there, the interior is laid in there, and I'm dropping the body down into place, uh, on or the, uh, the base into place on the body, and oh my god, everything is fitting. This is an unheard of miracle, and with my repaired post, I can put a little screw in here, and I, I don't see any reason to even take this back apart again. It, it went together so nicely, there was no problems. I'm going to call that done. Let's move on. Now, Austin has rightly pointed out uh, on Diecast Resurrection that the Molotov uh, chrome does not always stay perfectly shiny. But I think it's very, very serviceable. Um, and, you know, this thing is never getting handled. I'm not going to worry about it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, pumped a little bit of the chrome out of my pen into this little well. And I'm doing the surrounds of the taillights. And then I'm going to do the door handles and the, uh, uh, the bumper and, and bring all the chrome in. I've already painted the, uh, the scroll work that I printed out of my 3D printer, and that's sitting off to the side, um, drying, and then I'm gonna glue that on a little bit later here. But right now, uh, it's all molt off all the time. Beautiful, great stuff. Okay, so after the molt out chrome, all I need to do is a little bit of paint for the headlights, the taillights, 
and uh, glue on the scroll work onto the side, and we can call this sucker done. And uh, I guess without further ado, let's take a look at the SNS Cadillac Ambulance, the first ever Fat Guy Productions mega build in all its wicked ass glory. All right, there it is, the SNS Cadillac Ambulance conversion into a hearse. The very first mega build is in the books, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did, putting it together and bringing it to you. Uh, never before have I been more serious about comments, so please tell me what you thought. Do you want to see more mega builds? If so, let me know, and I'll be sure to line some up. Okay. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the bell, you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. And as always, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions, wishing you the most amazing, mega buildy kind of day. I hope you have a wonderful day, have a lot of fun, enjoy yourselves out there, but most of all, be good. Mm -hmm.